Welcome to the e-commerce brain trust podcast. I'm your host Kiri Masters from Bobsled Marketing and today my guest is Lara Yerdolian who is a fashion and beauty expert, on-air talent, entrepreneur and founder of Pretty Connected Blog and Accessories Line. She also serves as council member, council member and guest editor for New Beauty Magazine. Welcome Lara. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, it's great to speak with you. And, and what I um, really wanted to connect with you about is Amazon Live, which is, to, in my view, the next big um, innovation that Amazon's rolling out from a, a branding and promotion standpoint for brands. And I know that you've been involved sort of on the other side of the, of the camera with um, helping brands uh, produce and be the on-air talent for their Amazon live stream videos. So um, hoping to get an inside of you into what that's like. Also your sort of perspective on what are some of the best practices and misconceptions about um, working with influencers so that um, the brands that listen to this show know what they're getting into with um the Amazon live platform and also the influencer space if they're not uh, familiar yeah. with it or have some of those best practices. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, there's so much to talk about and Amazon live is such, you know, they just come up with new ways to engage with influencers and just this platform, especially is just another way to get your brand out there and it's yeah. still relatively new. So I think that's always intimidating on both sides um, when you're the influencer and then also the brand. But as we are home all day, you know, we're watching videos so important. It really is another way to engage your audience and something that, you know, brands really should look at. Yeah, well, I typically don't do video with these podcasts, but today we're doing a video because um, something that our marketing uh, specialist keeps hammering on about, we need to do more <laughs> video and yeah, here we are. I, I get, get conned into it sometimes. Um. <laughs> I love it. People get to know you a little bit better. I mean, audio is one thing, but when they actually see you being expressive, I think that adds another layer. And especially with something like Amazon, obviously you're selling products. So the importance yes. is, and to see it and to use it, to try it on, to show things that, you know, you get a little bit more across than just, you know, writing. And I think that sometimes people can only read and take in so much information and, to be able to just listen to it or hear subjects. And I mean, everything is on Amazon. It's just insane. So I think yeah. the amount of whether you want to talk about being a small business and hear all the tools that you use for your business. If you want to talk about your favorite, you know, gifts for holiday, it's such an easy, quick way you can do that. Or if you want to explain a skincare product, um, you're mm -hmm. limitless with um, video. And plus, you know, you're doing it from your phone. It's not like we're all in the same. I mean, yes, you can do it from your computer and there's some ways of doing things a little better but for the most part you know we're kind of all just doing it from our phone you don't need a ton of equipment um you know or you can just go into somebody's amazon store where they give you all the lighting advice you know it doesn't have to be expensive so i think that's another thing that's very attractive to influencers and brands it's pre-set up you're not you know going into studio to record you're literally just hitting some buttons on your phone. <laughs> I love how you talk about it. Like it's, um, it, it's obviously comes quite naturally to you, like this easy breezy, oh, we just hit record and we go live and, and, you know, try on these clothes and do tutorials. But for a lot of, a lot of people and a lot of brands, this is totally new territory and a, quite intimidating because it's live and it's not produced as, as heavily and things go wrong. So I'd, just to start off with, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about your experiences working with brands for Amazon Live or if you've done some of that for your own brands, what has been your experience on, on either side of the camera there? Yeah, I mean, again, when you're looking to work with an influencer or a person, like I do a lot of TV, I do a lot of panels, so public speaking is something that's very natural. I think every influencer has just been using Instagram stories and Instagram lives and things that are exactly similar in terms of your presence, or they're on YouTube. Um, the live thing is very real, that's true, you know, you mess up, but I think right now people are looking for a little bit of that, like unedited, just who are you, what are you trying to tell me? 
And ideally you're talking about things that you know about, right? It's not complicated. It's not, you know, when I'm going on air and I have to memorize like 25 different talking points and you know, you're trying to engage with them on something you love, you're getting them excited. I mean, Amazon really emphasizes like get people excited about a product. If they're not excited, they're probably not going to purchase. Um, yeah. So I think just like being on that side, like for me, um, one of my favorite brands, Mamond, they're under Amore Pacific, which is a huge um, skincare company. Beautiful products. I just did, they were the last live I did. And I loved it. You know, it was a chance to give people a little bit more of an opportunity to talk through the products, to ask questions in the chat, to show them, you know, how the masks work, how you, you know, apply different products. Okay, this is a toner, but you can add it to a spray jar, you know, to really kind of have that interaction, tell the brand story. So for mm. me, you know, and the way the platform works is you're not distracted. There aren't like things coming at you. There's not a film crew. You're literally on this like selfie mode. You can add in promo codes. All the products you're talking about, you can pre-add into your carousel. So you're not like, what was that product called? Or wait, what's the price of it? Like your audience is very well laid out. As I'm talking about it, I can even click to the product so it comes up on screen. You know how much it costs. You know what the promo is just for this live. So if you don't buy now or today, you know, it's going away. There's, you know, some incentives, which I think is obviously something that helps. Um, you know, and then you have to really engage people on your other end networks. I let people know on Instagram, I'm going to be on this live. Maman probably let them, their audience know as well. So you're kind of driving traffic from different sources. And I think that's the other thing. Instagram, well, sorry, Facebook. Sorry, it's still early. I see it. Amazon, which yeah. network are we on today? Yeah. No, you can do all your different social networks to promote your Amazon because it is still relatively no, new. Gaining followers um, is really going to benefit you when you gain followers. Okay, so I should back up. You can't just go live on Amazon. You have to first be a part of their influencer program or you have to be a brand. So you are already pre-signed up. You have a page. So if you go to the Pretty Connected page, there's different lists. I can put in all my home products that I love. I can put in all my skincare products that I love. I can put in my fall fashion, mm -hmm. best lighting or lives. I can make whatever stories I wanna do. The other thing I can do is you can actually create outfits on Instagram. And if it's like their hashtag is founded on Amazon, mm. you know, if I'm wearing a so Amazon, you can actually put that picture in your store and people can shop your entire look. So there's a lot of different ways once you're in the influencer program that you can use it. Once you have that program, you then on your phone have the live stream app. So it's your creator's app. So that's where you can go live. But they always recommend, you know, put up a photo, let people know you're going live weekly. So there's a lot of best practices within that. Mm. Or a brand can just hire you because you've got a great presence. You're a trainer. You don't need a following for that. You're just great at talking about, you know, you could work for the company. You could not work for the company. Yeah. Uh, those are the two types that. of, those are the two types of live setups that I saw. I sat down and watched way too much live video during prime day just to see you know how the platform was yeah. evolving it's been around for a little over a year now yeah. and there were two models one was the influencer model that, that you're talking about you're the influencer you have a following and so a brand like Mamon approaches you and and you have a deal with them to yeah. do the demos and and share it with your followers etc and then you can also go live as a brand um, when you're a registered brand on Amazon, you, you can also go live and do the same thing. And so that's, that's a question I have for you actually is from a brand's perspective, for example, um, Puma, they did a lot of live videos on Prime Day, which were workout videos and they brought talent in to do, it was a husband and wife, like uh, Hollywood trainers coming in and doing this work like a, like a 45 minute workout on Amazon live on Puma's um, uh, channel, I guess on, on Amazon. And it, then at the end there was some sort of fairly light product endorsements, which I thought it was a bit of a missed opportunity actually to not be sort of highlighting the products that they were using throughout the video. Cause I, I can't imagine, you know, a lot of people aren't going to sit through a 45 minute video like that. But anyway, those are the two models that I'm seeing. I'd love to get your thoughts on what are the, the pros and cons of you know, working with an influencer like yourself to do that endorsement or the brand actually picking up their effort around live and maybe bringing talent on to do that instead. So everything is programming, right? And how you're executing things. So 
from the influencer standpoint, the benefit of doing it on my page versus Maman's page or Puma's page is if you purchase while I'm on, I get a commission. Mm -hmm. It's just how it you also are more likely to be able to mixing mix products. Um, I mean, it, again, it always depends, but the brand might want you to just stick and promote them. So if Puma, you know, you're wearing a sweatband that just happens to not be theirs. You're not, and it's, you know, if it's Puma's, they should throw it in there. But if it's not, or you're wearing cool earrings, I don't know. You know what I'm yep. saying? But yep. most likely there is going to be restrictions. Right. Whereas if it's on your page, you can be like, and if you like my outfit, maybe you're not highlighting it in the carousel of products, but you're like, you can head to my blah, blah, blah page. Mm. You, know, my, my story, you know, my list on homes. You love my closet. Like if you're looking for that, you know, or my workout morning smoothies, what I'm using while I'm drinking this or water bottles, you know, it might be in a story that you've kind of created um, a list in advance so that people can still shop it and you don't have to spend the time on it. Yep. Puma did something smart. You know, they probably have a big following. Also followings make a difference. If the brand has a massive following, also let's say you have a very complicated name. I mean, Lara Yardolian is pretty extravagant. So that's why I always go by pretty connected for all my uh, platforms. But if I was working with Puma and it's easier for them to be like on Instagram saying, hey, head to Puma's page, everyone already knows what that is. They can remember it easier. Um, I think there is something to be said about that as well. And then otherwise, you know, it really just comes down to it. If Puma's doing like prime day, like we're going to have, you know, I think this has become very trendy during, uh, you know, the pandemic is just a lot of brands, whether it's not necessarily on Amazon, but on their lives they are doing, you know, we're going to do a morning meditation. We're going to do an afternoon mm -hmm. tarot card reading. We're gonna, like they're trying to do activities to engage individuals. Mm -hmm. So if they're doing national fitness day and they are going to have your favorite people and they're also promoting it, it kind of makes sense. It's like all day long ahead to Puma, you're going to see your favorite workout, celebrity workout stars. You're going to see, you know, hear from the brand. You're going to hear from our favorite influencers, our blah, 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 ambassadors. So you can kind of play around with it. And I think that's what makes this so cool is you can mm. really decide what makes sense for your brand. I don't think there is like this absolute rule of like, you absolutely want to go the influencers page. Yeah. You want to go, you know, in this direction. Also, how scripted is it? You know, some people love how organic or they don't want to be the only brand. My mom yep. worked as we're talking about a whole routine, but otherwise generally spill, like filling up 30 to 45 minutes on one brand, unless it's a workout or something you're doing can mm -hmm. be very, you know, very QVC ish. Whereas if you're at least doing a theme or a topic, you know, or demoing, you sometimes with makeup need a little more time, but with mm -hmm. other things like to talk about a dress for 45 minutes, if you don't have like 20 of them, you're going to be, there's only so many times you can be like, and look at how it fits. And that's, a, you know, so. that's a really great point about the programming. I think that there's some of the questions are, well, how long should I go live for? And it completely depends. I watched a, a video demo of, I can't remember the, the name of the chef, but it was a chef with a cookbook that came out and she also had her own line of um, like prepping kitchen, prepping utensils. And so she did, it was a single frame shot, no fancy, you know, nothing fancy. It was, it was quite simple. Her in her kitchen, showing the book, doing a cooking demonstration behind her and then coming back to talk about, you know, some of her favorite recipes from the book and showing the products and things like that. And cooking demonstration, I, I, I love to watch that. So I would happily sit there and watch a 20 minute cooking demo. But I also sat and watched a eye-wateringly boring demo of a laptop bag which was so it was so boring and the talent was so inexperienced and nervous and did not know the product and you can't talk about a laptop bag bag for for 20 minutes but you could do a cooking demo a workout a beauty routine yeah so it, it's going to be quite product it. specific so brands just really need to know, especially like who are you hiring? How are you doing things? You know, are you hiring them for their following? Are you hiring them for their presence? Cause they are able to talk intelligently about your product and they're a super fan and some people just love it, but they're not good at expressing themselves. So it just, I think that's where a brand has to do their research. And mm -hmm. like you just said, a 20 minute demo can be so engaging or it can be so boring. Yeah. And if you're just putting somebody out there who's nervous, Mm -hmm. You know, it's like put them out of them. and you also need to make sure you're not setting them up to fail. Like let them talk about other things. If you're just talking about the laptop bag and after four minutes, it's just getting, you know, maybe there should be other gadgets involved. Maybe it should yep. be, you know, like, okay, let's do funny things. Like, let's see how much weight can fit in it. Like find, find some creative yeah. ideas. 
that, you know, there's people on the other end who are watching it and how they're going to perform is really going to be based on how they execute everything. So yeah. and time limitation, you really want them to be longer. That gives a chance for your following to get a push notification to come through. That's, you know, as you're talking about the products, it's showing up on their pages. So if mm. I'm talking you know, about my AirPods, it's going to, and someone's looking at that, they're going to be, see the live below um, right. while I'm live. And they might be like, oh wait, somebody's talking about this. Let me see what she has to say. Oh, right. Cause and they follow you on, on Amazon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Or Got if you it. just happen to be on, like, if there's 10 products that you're using, like, let's say I'm using a Stila blush and somebody just happens to be on that page during the live, it's probably going to pop up on yes. the page that somebody's talking about, yep. you know, their product. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're also off of Amazon's live page, potentially kind of like what you were doing. You weren't following the people you're watching, but you're on their main page. So mm -hmm. you're just like clicking around or the headline, it's like how to gua sha your face for like epic cheekbones. Maybe that relates to your, the best smoothie recipes in under five minutes or whatever it is that, you know, kind of caught your eye. So headline is also important. If you're just mm -hmm. like fun, pretty connected, everyone might be like, what's fun about it like give a little something to get them you know 10 ways to give yourself an eye lift without you know surgical procedure like what eye creams what you know microcurrent gadgets am i using people love that they want to see those they want to see they want them to be demoed uh, yeah make it fun you don't well this is obviously the, the the part where working with influencers really pays off because you just know off the top of you just came up with like eight different content concepts off the top of your head because you know you've been doing this for years and you know what what are those engaging subjects what gets people's attention what gets gets click throughs and a brand might not necessarily have that um have that viewpoint so in terms of uh sort of the, the business model of of being an influencer and how brands should think about working with influencers i know that this is you know, a huge topic that deserves its whole own uh, chapter. But um, I just wanted to get your general thoughts on how you, some of the mistakes that brands make with engaging influencers, how they should really be thinking about compensating them and working with them as partners, um, you know, for, for campaigns like this. Yeah. So I think the first thing is to just identify people of all different followings, right? Even if I didn't have a following, I have a TV background, I'd probably be great on air. There's a lot of people who would be great on air if they're especially going to your page. Like how good is their information? Do you just love them? I mean, I think that's the real big thing is a lot of brands just don't do their research. They're like, oh, that person is X following. This person has mm. more followers. I'm just going to pick that person. And it just doesn't really work that way, especially when you're on video. Somebody with a massive following can just be, to your point, super boring <laughs> when you're watching. Yeah. Or somebody who maybe does not have a big following, but is an incredible cook and an incredible talent can suddenly sell you know i have a line of mass chains i always joke on instagram the person who sold the most product for me had 800 followers i have people with millions of followers who promoted my stuff it's wow. not ever always that you should be so fixated on especially when they're representing your brand so mm -hmm. especially like for a puma like is this somebody who like loves our do they wear it do we have a pre-existing relationship with them you know and the other thing too is sometimes they're stronger on other platforms and just because you know, they promote it on Instagram or their YouTube or blog. And let's say they didn't get anybody to come over to their Amazon. They still promoted you on a massive channel that maybe resulted in something. So mm -hmm. I think when you're trying to look at it, try to really look at it from like a 360 point of view. Is this somebody who you want to work with kind of in the long term? And then you talked about money. Well, there's a lot of different ways of doing things. Right now, everybody's talking about affiliate marketing. Obviously, if they sell and they're doing the stream on their page, they are getting an affiliate link. So there's some compensation there. There's often, you know, in kind, you're giving them the product. Is it expensive? Um, you know, and you have to understand too, a lot of people just get a lot of things, <laughs> myself mm. included. So that's not always enough. And it's just because you have to understand that it's people's time. Like just because it's live and it's a button, you know, it's not always so easy to do. And then mm -hmm. obviously when you're hiring them, it's a job, you know, in the sense that they're spending time learning all your talking points. They need to do a good job. Like that's what they're being paid for. If I go live every week and we're calling it like Laura's top 10 to get through the day or today's the stress edition and I'm promoting my CBD drops, my massage oils, my bath salts that I use to relax, my aromatherapy, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Then if you are a brand approaching me, I'm like, oh, 
I do a weekly segment. I can just throw that in. It's not so hard. But if you're like, hey, Laura, we would love for you to do a 30 minute segment for free for us. We're going to give you some $10 oils. You think you could talk about engagingly and promote it on your Instagram. And this, by the way, happens all the time. Mm -hmm. You have to understand like, we're running businesses. So a lot of people have families. They have, you know, kids that are running around just trying to homeschool. They have, you know, a hundred other things going on. And then they probably have jobs that they need to do and do a good job for because somebody's paying them. Yeah. So it's not always like something that's going to work out. That said, the more open you are, and I think the more you get them to just love your product, they want to do that for you or they want to yeah. find opportunities. So I would say more than just the influencer, if there's somebody who are going live regularly and they have a show and they're like something that you see fitting in, you're like, we love your, like also show that you know who they are. Sometimes right. people like, you know, they're just like, oh, person with following who seems cool. Will you do yeah. this for us? You know, it's like, they should resonate with your brand and do exactly what you did. Start going on like a binge of watching these lives and who made you want to hit purchase. Yeah. I think that's a big deal. And then it's so easy to get in contact with people. You can get in contact with them on Instagram. You can find their email, do a link, find their LinkedIn. Like I DM'd find- you on Instagram. That's how I got a hold yeah. of you. <laughs> like, like, I DM'd Whitney Cummings recently, who obviously has a huge following. I was like, do you want some of my mass chants? And she was like, yeah, I'm having a like outdoor social distance party. Like send some over. Like don't underestimate the power of DM, whether you're a major celebrity or you're like me over here. <laughs> so anybody else, like you can find such great talent. And honestly, if they don't respond, it probably didn't even get into their main page or they might respond late, but like yeah. try Go yeah. make it, like, follow them, engage with them. Like this is somebody, especially if you're about to pay them a large amount of money, these are people you should be following for at least a few weeks and see like, oh, you know what? I really like this person. I really think mm-hmm. they represent my parents well. I would like to also start a relationship with them. It's not always a one for one. You can't just pay somebody X amount of dollars and be like, and that's how much they're going to sell. It doesn't unfortunately always work that way. And you have to also yeah. make sure it's very on brand for them. You know, you can't, if they're not a great cook, but they've got a great following and they're fumbling or they're trying to make, they're just used to taking pretty pictures of food or eating it and reviewing it, you know, you have to just consider what is this content going to look like? And is yeah. this their thing? Because it is live. Well, unfortunately, what you're talking about is hard work, like yeah. researching the influencers mm-hmm. and watching them and figuring, is this a good fit? And then reaching out. And a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of brands are out there looking for a quick fix and think that there's going to be some kind of immediate ROI in influencer marketing. And there's, there's not, it's, it's sort of like content marketing to me. I've been doing content marketing for a, for a long time and it's not an immediate thing that pays nope. off right away. There's no, um, you know, pr- prescriptive ROI from it. But as we look at platforms like Amazon live, which, is building momentum and you look at the Chinese market where so much uh, commerce is happening over video, whether that's one-to-one or one-to-many, I really think that this is the going to be a a huge channel for brands. And my, my call out to brands listening is, yeah, look, listen to Lara. There's not a one size fits all approach. There's not a one size fits all compensation model. You need to figure out a deal that's right for you and right for them and start experimenting because this is going to be uh, video just in general is going to be a huge format. We're seeing it with live. We're seeing it with um, video ads on, on Amazon, which are performing very well. Video is just going to be where it's at and you need to start developing that IQ around it. I think too, to really take a moment, like I said earlier about your like whole 360 plan, like maybe it's also, getting them to write about it on their blog or their YouTube because they're already doing this. So you're getting some like SEO from the link in. Maybe it's also going out to all these people, even if it's just for product and saying, hey, you know, I see you do a bunch of lives. This feels very on brand. I'd love to just send it to you. That's not usually mm-hmm. a lot of investment. It's more like an organically, maybe it makes the show. But I think you have to figure out what you're asking them and then try to get influencers to put it into their store. Um, so like I said, I launched like some of the first mass chains. Uh, it's actually a multi-use chain. And we had done so many tours before the pandemic that these chains were used for cameras and water bottles and all these other fun things. And I'd done 
all around that's the great. country. We'll link to so, we'll link to those oh, in the show you. notes too because that sounds but awesome. Where where my point is with this is pre-pandemic, I hundreds and hundreds of influencers had this from a lot of the collaborations I did. But right now, you know, they didn't have an affiliate place to do it. They're all great doing stories. A lot of influencers are my friends. They're giving me content on Instagram, whatever it is. But now that I'm on Amazon for them, it's my job to go to them and say, and this goes for all brands. It's influencers and people have yours and they're in the program go email them say hey guys guess what we just got on amazon we would love to be in your store by them putting it in your store and then if they promote it they are getting a commission so it is more likely that they're going to talk about you that's such a great point that is such a great point what a quick win all those hundreds of people i can just email and be like hey guys we're now on amazon i would love if you i see you wear it all the time you know maybe it's under their holiday gift stories so that everybody who's shopping and as they're just promoting like hit my amazon for my holiday gift yeah they're not promoting me i didn't pay them but all of a sudden it's there all of a sudden people are purchasing because it's a pretty hot ticket item i'm they're getting commission i'm getting sales i'm seeing how many people are getting sales and i'm like wow that influencer over there really performed for me. Let me go spend some money and do something else with them. And even if it didn't oh, go that well, you know what? this went well. So try to think a little bigger is what I always yeah. try to tell for brands because they tend to just do one thing. They micromanage it. It doesn't do well. And they're like, where did we go wrong? We hate this platform. We hate yeah. influencers. We hate, you know? yeah. So, um, and not all influencers are great. Some of, big, some of them are not. Like, they're not good at this. I don't think we can lump one as being wonderful and one as not. It's really where I say, but, you know, create a tribe, keep working with the same people, add new ones, try it out, see what happens. So that's interesting. I, I don't, I haven't, I don't recall seeing a place where you can see which influencers have performed, you know, in the Amazon Association. I, I would assume you'd be more like as an like as when you get sales. So if I was working with you and suddenly you put it in your store and I was seeing traffic coming from Amazon or all of a sudden, you know, you did a live and I'm seeing sales. It takes, you know, because nobody really sees on the outside. But if suddenly I see 50 mass chains have just sold, I'm like, what is happening? And I noticed that you were the one who just added it in. Oh, okay. Powers of deduction rather than it being. A little bit bit of that. But also, again, as a whole platform, you then are going to be ranked higher in Amazon and you're going to see yourself, you know, Amazon as a self becoming a lot more successful for you as a brand. So I think, again, to add that in as part of your strategy is really important, putting it into the list of the stories. Because everyone is getting, like, I have people I've been on their podcast, and they're not like a major influencer, but they're like, oh, when you talk about products that they happen to be on Amazon, can you let me know? Because I can link to them. So like Amazon's Mm -hmm. reach is really getting out there for all these brands and individuals. It's not like, oh, you have to have millions of followers and you're in. A lot of people are engaging and working with this affiliate model. So I think to like, you know, and then they're like, hi, we had pretty connected on today. Here are her top 10 winter favorite skincare products. Mm-hmm. They're in our store if you want. At the end of this episode, if you want to head to my Amazon page, we can listen to it. So it's not the video platform, but it's something else. And then if they're doing video on top of it, it's just, you know, more ways you're engaging with people. So what would you say back to, back to compensation? So influencers get access to Amazon Associates, which is an affiliate program. What percent, like if you had to guess of a, of an influencer that has their pots in a few different things in a few different parts, what percent of their overall income would come from Amazon affiliate revenue? Because they dropped the commission rates quite substantially. Yeah, they are pretty low. I'm, Listen, I've never been very affiliate focused only because I want to talk about what I talk about. I don't like feeling like a salesperson. I think for me to really perform as a salesperson, mm. I can't be out there trying to get your sales. I have to just tell you why I love it, express it, get people excited, tell why it makes my life easier, you know, and work in that sort of a model versus like, this is paying my rent. I need you to purchase. I already try to stay away. Um, That said, with brands, a lot of them losing budgets and different things, a lot of these influencers are really looking to Amazon because they can build it out. They have so much clothes coming in their wardrobe, especially the fashion bloggers. Mm. I've talked to a lot of girls with huge followings. Um, Because I kind of like to do the market research on both sides too and ask like, what's helped? What hasn't helped? What's working? And they're like, you know, nobody can take that away from you, your affiliate commission. You know, as I'm wearing it, as I'm putting them into these, you know, stories and these different buckets, um, you know, my audience, you know, I'm putting it on my Instagram, swipe up for this show, these shoes Mm -hmm. off Amazon, you know, they can then create content around that too. And it's organic. They're not being told promote me for 20 minutes, make sure you include X, Y, and Z. They yeah. get to just go on as the person being like, 
you know, white boots are really in right now. Here are my top three favorites. They're in the carousel. You can also find them in my store. Mm -hmm. It's like next, pair it with this belt, pair it with this, I got this hat, blah, 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 whatever it is. So they get to just sort of have fun with the content. And a lot of them are making significant money, but it's not trans, you have to build it. That's the only thing, like you can be good at it, but you know, and a lot of them are really putting the effort in right now because they're already creating the content. They're just right. adding the piece. Right. And it's in their highlight videos I'm seeing on Instagram stories, like my Amazon list, Prime Day. Look at how many things that Amazon just does. Yeah. That every, they know everybody's shopping. And you also sometimes, you know, especially if they're linking over from you, you, you have opportunities to sometimes get other commissions of other things they're buying. So right. there's a lot happening. Uh, And by the way, you can get a link, even if you're not in their influencer program, you can do an affiliate hyperlink, um, which is totally different and still make money that way. So there's, and listen, most people are shopping on Amazon. It's just, you know, as they're already in there grabbing one or two little things, if they see something else, they just add it right in. Oh, look at those cool ankle weights. Wait, I actually yeah. think I could use ankle weights. Like throw it in with my, you know, whatever supplement and toilet paper and who knows what else you're, you're, you're ordering. So it's a little bit of an easy sale than being like, go to Bergdorf's, check mm. out my $1,500 Bellman jacket. Like that's tough. People are already shopping on Amazon. They're always looking for a find. It's sometimes hard to navigate because there's so much, but when you're watching it or you're seeing it on your favorite influencer, you're like, Oh no, I think I do need those white boots or I do need that Mamon, you know, red serum energy Lars always talking about and using, you know, it's, it's a little bit more interactive, um, for sure. Yeah. And something, again, brands need to put as part of their strategies, but for influencers to really thrive, they need to put it as part of theirs. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I, I think what I'm, what I'm hearing is for some influencers, it's a more substantial revenue stream for others. And it's also something that is a bit more flexible. They can choose when and how and et cetera, how to put promote a brand. brand. Yeah. There's no Probably. deal with them, but it's, you're talking about some pretty small percentages of the sale going to the influencer. So if you're working with someone super high profile, they're not going to be interested in just working on the affiliate commission with you unless they're like i said already like it's already part of their show it's an easy yep. add-in you know i love you know i love to talk about my you know let's say the top 10 lighting to do a video here's this ring light you should buy here's this computer light you should buy so somebody comes to me and they're like we have this new audio recording mic that does this this and this and this and it's amazing we'd love to send it to you and i get it and i'm like oh i know i can sell like a million of these people like this thing does x y and z all in one and it's made my life easier and suddenly you get a really substantial amount of sales the other mm-hmm. nice thing is once it's in that list when people are like I did have to switch rooms because of audio guys and my lighting setup was in the other one. But if somebody's like, Laura, oh my gosh, we saw you on that amazing podcast and your lighting looked amazing. What do you use? You can just send them a link. You're not being like, here's like, you don't have to find it. You don't have to be like, oh, this it should make your life easier too. When you're and technically like, in theory, you're getting compliments on something or you're the person they go to for the skincare advice. They're like, where do I, I saw you on a live talking about this or where was that one item? You know, oh, here's my list. This is all my fall fashion. This is all my lighting. Done. Love it. So um, just to, to, to wrap up, Lara, thank you so much for sharing all of your insider experience from both sides, both as a brand and as an influencer and as talent and working with brands. Um, what kind of brands do you like to work with and how can people reach out to you and and connect with you so i'm very easy to find it's at pretty connected for everything instagram blog i think if you just google pretty connected my contact will come in come up um, and i like to work with a mix fashion beauty um i love gadgets i love you know like i said anything with lighting and different things i love multi-use products um you know i think that i'd like a lot of small business ones now that i'm here like i'm obsessed with this like dymo thermal printer like i think i've sold a hundred of these printers so anything that's gonna kind of make your life easier you know you don't need ink like i know why i'm selling it right now i've never worked with them disclaiming it right now but you find i think things that make our lives easier we get very excited about um i also do a lot of tv segments so i think those are always hot products and topics, but you know, fitness ones, I might not want the heaviest thing, but I, I, I go with some ankle weights or some easier at home. Love supplement. <laughs> I mean, it's really, we've all turned so lifestyle that I think anything, you know, I just bought a house. So home decor is going to be my next mm-hmm. thing. Um, you know, making awesome. 
my next phase of my life. Um, yeah, so it's really quite, I'm quite girly when it comes to most things, but I'm outdoorsy too. So anything in those, everything basically, I feel like I'm saying, what a great question. I probably should have prepped for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Thank you so much, Lara, for joining us and uh, see you around. Yeah, bye.